Why is it that some women say their epidural was the absolute best thing about their labor, and then others say that it completely failed them? From my own experience, I've found there are some details that can predict your success with an epidural, and unfortunately, these are the details that most people preparing for birth don't ever even hear about. I'm going to show you five of the most common epidural mistakes and how to prepare in a way that if you have an epidural, you're going to rave about it. So let's start by looking at the tale of two neighbors. So first we have Susan who got an epidural and reports that her epidural was the best thing ever. And then we have Laura who got an epidural and said that her epidural didn't work. Now, when we look at the details of these stories, their experiences were very common. Each of these women had an average length of their labor. Each of these women got an epidural about the same time in their labor, and they each felt quite a bit of pressure during the pushing stage with their epidural. They felt so much pressure during this stage that they felt the urge to push, and they could tell when they were having contractions. So why? Were their experiences so alike, but they describe them so differently? Well, the difference here is their expectations. One of them had an expectation that was in line with reality, and the other, it wasn't. So Susan learned about the benefits and risks of an epidural. She understood that many people do experience pressure during the pushing phase. So when she felt pressure, she wasn't shocked by it. She knew that this was possible and she knew her epidural was working like epidurals work. Laura, on the other hand, heard from her cousin and her coworkers that epidurals were amazing. So she just assumed that that meant that she wouldn't be feeling any pain or pressure once she got the epidural. I want you to not make the mistake of setting up your expectations not in line with reality. I mean, if you know you're going to dinner at McDonald's and you get there and all the food is quick and easy, and the shake machine is even working, then you have a good experience. But if you go to dinner and you think you're going to a fancy gourmet restaurant, but you go to McDonald's, you're not even gonna be happy that the milkshake machine is working. You are going to think that dinner was a failure. So let's talk about the reality of what is common with an epidural. It is common to experience some pain with an epidural, and it is common to experience pressure. Definitely during pushing. A lot of times the epidural does not take away the pushing pressure. The other thing with an epidural is that you do have all the associated risks and extra intervention that come with an epidural, like a urinary catheter. You have a blood pressure monitor. You have to get IV fluids. So when you have to have a urinary catheter, this is not a failure of an epidural. This is just what comes along with an epidural. So let's set ourselves up with realistic expectations. This leads me to the next mistake, and that is not building any skills to deal with any pain or pressure that you feel when you have an epidural or before you get one. People that have a great epidural experience also usually have coping skills to manage their pain. They likely have taken a childbirth class which teach these skills. And when you aren't relying on the epidural to eliminate all of your pain, you will have a better chance of being satisfied with using the epidural. Many of the students who take my classes are actually planning on getting an epidural, but they also learn techniques that they can use either before the epidural or in line with the epidural to have that positive experience. Now, if you haven't taken a class yet, I'm going to put a link down below to the one I teach. And this next mistake I made myself with my first birth, and that is when you get the epidural, you just check out of labor altogether. It's like you get the epidural and it turns into a normal day. I remember I was chatting with my husband and my nurse, and I I kind of disconnected myself with the process. This isn't such a bad thing until it's time to push. And pushing requires usually, especially for a first timer, a lot of effort. If you disconnect from your labor during your epidural and it's time to push, sometimes it can be hard to like get yourself back in the mindset that you have to work. And also get yourself back into the mindset that you might have some discomfort. I mean, it is still labor. So if you can avoid that checking out and still keep in the game, what that looks like is checking in with how your contractions are going, you know, talking to your nurse about your birth plan for pushing, making sure that you are just still an active member of the team. You're still the main player here, so you need to still be in the game. Speaking of disconnecting from labor, often people forget to move 
with an epidural. Now this is mistake number four, and it is very common. Getting an epidural usually creates numbness around your legs and you don't have the ability to leave the bed, but it doesn't mean that you can't move in the bed. Side to side with the help of your nurse is the best way to get this done. Let your nurse know that you would like help moving while you have the epidural so that you can do your part to assist in the descent of your baby. The other part about moving is you can move when you are pushing. Bonus tip, the sideline position can be done easily with an epidural and it reduces the likelihood of tears. I'm just saying, sideline, amazing. So don't make the mistake of not moving in labor. So the nurse is such an important member of your team when you have an epidural. And this brings me to number five mistake, and that's not providing feedback to your nurse about your epidural. So when it comes to the epidural, making adjustments is often necessary. Sometimes they have to adjust your medication. Often they have to adjust the position of your body in order to experience the most reduction in pain, what you're really desiring. So don't skip on this feedback. It's kind of like telling your eye doctor that your glasses are fine, but you can only see out of one side. Make sure that you are actually telling them what you're experiencing. The other thing about this is the sooner the better. So if you get an epidural and you feel pain that's starting to return, but it's only starting on one side, and maybe you don't wanna bother the nurse and press the call button, and you're like, eh, it's probably fine. That's not what I want you to do. What I want you to do is give that feedback to your nurse. Your nurse wants to help you have adequate pain management. And if you let this pain build longer, sometimes it's harder to come back down from it. So give that feedback. Again, I know I talked about earlier that it's common to feel some pressure and pain, but make sure that your team is doing all that they can to help you get the best coverage, pain coverage as you can, and that requires your feedback. Before you get the epidural, one of the best things you can do is take advantage of your ability to still move, especially outside the bed. I put together a list of my top 10 positions for labor. I know you're gonna love to check out. And if you're like 95% of the viewers of this channel, then you haven't subscribed yet. So please consider hitting that subscribe button. I have got loads of good stuff already filmed for you, loads coming, and I promise that you are gonna be glad that you did. See you next time.